I've been blessed this morning. How about you? Just allowing the music to flow into my soul takes me to the place of peace. It was Wednesday at lunch as I was continually working on my sermon, focusing on peace, that I hit the remote control to click on channel 62 to catch up on the news. And the news of that day was news that just tore at my heart. For in four minutes' time in San Bernardino, 14 people lost their life and 21 were injured. Furthermore, I have uh, I heard the the word waterman, and I recognized it, and I said it's just a couple of miles away from some relatives that live there, and others in our congregation have um, relatives that live in that area as well. And so as the events of that day kind of rolled forward and bits and pieces of that horrible tragedy came forward, I just took a deep breath and said, Lord, you've got to come soon. You've got to put an end uh, to this mayhem, this evil force. And then the spinoff of all of that has been one group after another saying, well, the solution to all of this is let's have better laws. And if we had better gun control, we would not have this kind of thing. Or if this was just advised, uh, we could do away with this. And I believe they're all missing the point. This was a simple act of evil. There is no reasoning for it. There is no excuse for it. We live in a very complex world where for a short time, the prince of darkness reigns in this world for a short time. But I'm so glad that not only is there a prince of darkness, there's a prince of what? There's a prince of peace. So for this morning, for just a few moments, I'd like you to consider your relationship with the Prince of Peace. I find that an interesting term because Jesus could have been called just King of the Universe, but he's called Prince. A Prince is a son of what? The King. Now, if there's a King and there's a son, who is in the forefoes to the mind of the king, his son, the prince. Simple, simple and clear, simple logic, isn't it? If you want to catch a parent's eyes, you talk about their children. If you want to take and pull at their heartstrings, you, you harm their children and you will awaken the papa bear and the mama bear in them, right? That's the way it works. I can take a lot. You know, you just bring it on. I've got a narrow mind and broad shoulders. You just bring it on. I can, I can deal with it. You start messing with my wife or my family, extended family, you're not going to find a very calm person. It's the, uh, the bear claws, you know, the, the gloves come off and the bear claws come out. I am glad, I am so glad that Jesus is called the Prince of Peace. Because as the Son of God, the King of, Pre the King of Peace reigns in the universe today. Do you believe that, friends? However, we have to, we have to ask, how long, how long, how long will the evil prince of darkness reign in 
our world. We find, there, uh, we find in Scripture that he is described as the prince of this world for a short time. We find that his powers are bound. For a short time, evil reigns. For a short time, people have a choice. For a short time, there are limits. Now he reigns, but he doesn't reign over everybody. He reigns over those who give their lives to him. So you can choose today to be part of the kingdom of darkness or part of the kingdom of light. You can choose today to live your life according to the powers of darkness and have evil reign in your life, or you can choose today to open your life to the Prince of Peace and have goodness, light, flow into your life today. The choice is yours today as we enter into the Christmas season. Though I want to step back for just a moment, because I don't know how it is in your life, Occasionally, my life gets a little out of balance. You know, something happens that's unexpected. Something comes out of nowhere, and it wafts me alongside the head. And I say, I don't like that. And I kind of reel, uh, reel a little bit and say, you know, I don't like this, God, what's happening in my life right now. I want that peace that passes all understanding. I want that peace and assurance of your presence in my life. As I looked at the subject of peace, Duke University did a study on peace, and they found that um, they noted that there are several attributes and several, several ways of actually increasing the peace in your life, the internal peace in your personal life. I'm just going to touch on these very quickly without elaboration. They said the absence of suspicion and resentment or nursing a grudge was a major factor in unhappiness. So if you want peace, you want to do away with unhappiness. The second thing they said is not living in the past, an, unho an unwholesome preoccupation with old mistakes and failures leads to depression. They said the third way, not wasting time and energy, fighting conditions that you cannot change, Cooperate with life instead of trying to run away from it. it will bring a holistic peace to, your, uh, to yourself. Force yourself to stay involved with living in the world. Resist, resist the temptation to withdraw and become a recluse during periods of emotional distress. Good advice, isn't it? Refuse to indulge in self-pity. When life hands you a raw deal, accept the fact that nobody gets through life without some sorrow or misfortune. Cultivate the old-fashioned virtues, love, humility, compassion, and loyalty. The seventh, do not expect too much of yourself when there is a too wide of gap between self-expectation and the ability to meet those goals you have set. Feelings of inadequacy are inevitable. Find something bigger, the last one. Find something bigger than yourself to believe in. Self-centered, egotistical people secure score lowest in many tests measuring happiness. Quite a challenge. Not just a whimsical uh, compilation, but Duke University studying the things that cause unhappiness uh, in our lives. But I believe, friends, today, despite what you might be facing, despite the trials and tribulations you might find yourself in, despite the chaos in the world, how are we ever going to end terror in our world? I'm going to suggest to you that it probably will continue until Jesus comes. Do I like that? No. But I know where to go when I'm overwhelmed by it. I go to a place called quietude. I go to the place that says internally, be still and know, what does the rest of the verse say? That I am God. You see, when the pressures of life pour in, when pieces of your life become complex and things just are no longer in control or structured the way that you want them, 
we often are filled with anxiety and we start running about chaotically, trying to grasp at this, trying to do that, trying to make sense out of life when sometimes there is no sense to what we are going through except that we turn to the source of peace, the Prince of Peace, who will bring a sense of stability to us spiritually and will cause us to go to the place of peace to be in His presence. So I just want to leave you with two or three promises that come out of the Scripture. I'm going to suggest to you today, uh, the Scripture says, I am with you what? Always. I am with you what? Always. I'm with you part of the time. No, I am with you always. Now, if you're 14 today, or 10, or 8, and there's chaos in your family, the scripture says, I am with you always. If you're having difficulty in your relationships, boyfriend, girlfriend, mom and dad, I am with you always. If you find life overwhelming and don't know what to do, I am with you always. Do you find a reassuring, echoing ring lingering in your mind? I am with you how often? When you're doing well? I am with you when you get an A or a B on your test? I am with you when you're good? I am with you when you live your life the way I want, it to, want you to? I am with you when you make stupid mistakes. I am with you when you don't do your best. I am with you when nobody else is with you. The Prince of Peace abides and gives us that assurance that come, whatever comes into our lives, that He will be with us. Thank you. Always. Let me suggest, when the devil comes and he pours confusion in, and He brings circumstances beyond our control where there's no way out. Christ is right there. Now, in the cosmic conflict between two princes, the prince of God, the good prince, and Satan, the evil prince, in the cosmic com conflict, they are not alone. Who steps in as they do battle? Who steps in? the ruler of the universe, who steps in, the king of king and lords of lord. We try to do it in and of our own power. We try to do it in and of our own strength. We try to figure life out. Don't go there. Step back. Go to the place of peace. Just take a deep breath. Take a time out when life doesn't make sense. The scripture suggests Peace be, peace be what? Still. Go to the place of stillness. A quiet place. Go to a quiet time. Find a quiet song that you might listen to, that you might sing. And in that quietness, hear the voice of God. In that quietness, listen to the Prince of Peace. For He came 2,000 years ago. He came as a Son of God to fill the world with peace. As you listen to the rest of our worship service in song today, let those words flow and the music be captured in your heart and soul, that this might be a time of peace as we worship the Prince of Peace today.